Thanks for staying with us. We are now joined by Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos, to help us x-ray some of the headlines on our national dailies. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Kolawole. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being a part of our program. Okay, we're starting this uh, morning with the Business mm -hmm. NG. Um, I'm not starting with the, the um, biggest headline. I'm starting with a small headline on top there on the business NG. Nigeria seeks $750 million World Bank loan. And as a result, may reintroduce telecom tax. Let's begin with that. Because they want a loan from the World Bank, they may reintroduce telecom task, tax. Sorry. So we're seeing all this tax, <laughs> tax here, tax there, and all that. But just let me hear what you think. <laughs> Honestly speaking, um, when this uh, government came in about a year ago, one of the first impressions they gave us was that um, they were going to cut uh, all these uh, loans uh, that the previous administration mm. had been killing. And they were going to look uh, internally as it got to solve uh, the nation's resources and maximize for the benefit of the people. But it would appear, from what we are seeing, rather than cover the taking of uh, loans from internal, I mean, within the country, and from outside, this government is not ready to do that. And so, the loan has begun to pile up uh, again. We collect last week. We discussed the issue of the loan. They said we are going to be taken from the World Bank to do some irrigation projects uh, all over the country. And we reminded them that Nigeria has established a river basin authority since the Second Republic. What happened to those water basin authorities? So they are not ready to stop taking loans, and uh, to worsen the situation, they also impose all sorts of levies on the Nigerian people. Taxes and levies and what are those? They are not going to be paying cyber crime uh, tax. Mm. They will be paying, uh, I mean, the uh, PS operators are to register uh, with um, the Corporate Affairs Commission and some regulatory authorities. All these registrations will take some forms of money, authorizations or the other. And Dito, uh, also, whatever bank account you operate with, um, with the different commercial banks and other, are also subject to all forms of taxations or the other. So whichever way you look at it, Nigerians are getting more and more impoverished. They're skinning us. And... Um, They've been asking us to tighten our belt, whereas uh, there is no, nothing to show that they are ready to tighten their own. So, as much as they are mortgaging the future of the country by taking all manners of loans, internally and externally, they are also uh, I mean, uh, imposing all forms of taxation on the Nigerian people. Whereas, there are other alternatives we could have explored. We have always said that the cost of governance is too high in this country. We need to really reduce that. We have also said the cost of contracts in this country is also too high. One good example is the so-called coastal road that they have said that they want to, uh, to construct uh, with about 50 billion, um, I think, miles out there about. And then another road from Lagos to Sokoto that is also going to cost uh, the billions of uh, naira. Like I have emphasized, you don't start expanding public uh, sector expenditure when you are facing this kind of loan, when you don't have uh, the resources, you don't have the money. We also check in the paper today, the federal government is begging foreign investors to come and take up uh, 17 oil blocks that is available that nobody probably wants it. And why is it that people don't want it? The truth of the matter is that 
the Western world is investing in alternative energy and not on fossil fuel. And like I have said before, sooner than later, fossil fuel, petroleum, will be like coal that nobody wants to have anything to do with. It is just obsolete energy, obsolete technology, and no other. So these are not good times for Nigeria at all. And this government, especially a civil administration, is supposed to make our life better and more comfortable. Yeah, well. Um, a, a headline close to that same one on the top left corner is that Tinubu to return to Nigeria on Wednesday. That's according to presidency. I remember that uh, the president re uh, traveled and was supposed to return to the country a few days ago. But, you know, people kept asking, where is our president? Because he didn't get back home. And now he's to return on Wednesday. Um, <laughs> what do you think? Mm. Well, the itinerary of the whereabouts of Mr. President, of the Vice President, of Senate President, Deputy Senate President, Speaker of House of Representatives, their deputies, governors, deputy governors, and whatever. It's not supposed to be shouted in any ministry, in any ministry as public figures. We should know their whereabouts any time of the day, any time of the night. Because emergency situations do arise in which you need the attention of Mr. President and these other principal officers. As I have mentioned, the president was said to have gone to Saudi Arabia for a conference, and then from there he made a detour, I think to the UK or London or wherever, and know that. He's only now that he's coming back into the country that we have been told we have been to. This is not too good for the image of the presidency, because you remember when Yara had his challenges, the whole country wrote up in unison and insisted he must know the whereabouts of Yara Dwa. And when he was in Saudi Arabia treating himself, Nigerians also insisted they want to know what is happening to their president, what form of treatment is getting in Saudi Arabia, who is treating him, what are the ailments that he is suffering from. That is the way things are done. Everything concerning the principal officer that I have mentioned must never be started in mystery. If you don't want your private life to be put in the public sphere, then don't venture into any of these public offices. Hmm. Okay. Um, uh, another small headline. Um, uh, it's not like I'm avoiding the, the major headline because that's on everybody's lips. But another small headline says, um, NGX group downsizes, 40 staff members let go. We're seeing the downsizing everywhere. Microsoft downsizing. Mm. Uh, we just mm. read another story. Uh, downsizing. Exactly. Uh, Bolt, Bolt downsized um, a, mm. a department of 45 people. They sacked 22. And exactly. everywhere downsizing. If you're not folding up, you're downsizing and, yeah, and calling it restructuring and all. Where? I don't know. Well, the, the agency just mentioned today happened to be a parastata also to say of the federal government. Yeah. It's uh, a name of uh, the stock exchange or the other And just like you have observed, this is an organization that just declared billions of um, or millions of profits uh, for the last uh, business uh, session. So if they are making so huge profit, why are they downsizing? Why are they retrenching staff? This something doesn't really add up in there. According to them, they said they have embarked on the step because of the advice they have got from an accounting firm that say uh, certain staffers are not required, they are not needed, that the place is uh, bloated, that it's a waste of um, uh, resources to continue to keep those um, uh, staff. When these kind of assertions are made, we often forget that the responsibility of government is to provide jobs for people so that they will be able to earn a decent living and they will not engage in criminality. Mm. And that even in places where government cannot provide these jobs, you could simply employ people to be digging holes 
and covering it back, and then you'll be paying them for some futile exercise. And if you don't want to do that, you can put people on the scale, you know, on the side them, that they be earning some income, and need to keep body and soul together, or they become gainfully employed again. In our instances, this don't happen. Once you are restrained, you are thrown under the board. You are thrown into the sea. So you don't sink or drown in your own uh, poverty. And the uh, nature that treats uh, citizens this way shouldn't be affecting the loyalty and patriotism from such people. Especially when those who are in charge of uh, the nation, those who manage the affairs of the nation, are themselves not being prudent in the management of the nation's um, uh, resources. Well, if uh, companies are folding up, if inflation is rising to 34, 35 percent, if uh, companies are uh, leaving the country, if you now have to pay people to come and invest in the rail block, it simply means that the economic, the economic mantra of this government is not working. And they need to make it work so that Nigerian people can be happy again. Okay, um, <clears throat> let Nigerian people be happy again. But uh, this screaming headline, uh, that's the last we'll take from Business NG, is saying millions of food crisis, millions in Nigeria to face severe hunger by June. That's according to report. The, the hunger has already started, my brother. <clears throat> I happen to be somebody who go to the street to eat a lot. And what I see in most places is a uh, recycling. I have seen everybody's men, male adults, who are working, who go to some of these uh, roadside uh, bookers to eat or cafeterias to eat, and they will tell the vendors, the people selling the food, just give me a bar or give me fufu. Don't put me to fish in it. Those things have become a luxury. And then they will not even buy the number of uh, uh, modes or ranks of those uh, that are for food that could satisfy an adult is just by maybe one or two, just to keep hunger, just to silence the hunger they suffer from temporarily. I've also noticed some of these wounded vendors complaining to me that the number of pots they used to cook in the day are drastically reduced. Because people no longer come and buy food, they cannot afford it. And some of the people who buy come there to buy on credit. So, look at our own level. In the past, we could walk to Mr. B, we could walk to the Swiss Sensation, we could walk to Chicken Republic to have delicious meals. How many of girls can do that again? So, if at our level, we cannot eat whatever we desire again. Whatever will make us happy, whatever is palatable, whatever is different. Imagine what is happening to the roadside organizer, to the roadside mechanic, to the woman who grinds pepper, to the woman who sells cola nut, to the woman who sells pure water. Imagine what will be happening to them. I was told a cup of uh, bread, which is that a tin make, is about 400 naira now for, I mean, for, for I think for beans or rice. And uh, a team of milk <laughs> cannot satisfy a full gold adult if you have to eat a proper meal. Mm. And you also have to add some ingredients to tomato, onions, maggi, and whatever. You have not added the, the gas the that you used to I'm cook also it. So, it's so for about 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 naira now, which you probably will eat once or twice. So the hunger is already there. It is for the government to mitigate the hunger. So that this disaster, carrying us in the face, can be put in abeyance. Mm. Will the government listen? Because if you talk, they will say you're trying to unseat the government. And that's what we've been hearing. Uh, anytime somebody uh, complains, you are either in opposition or you are within. You are a fifth columnist or something, one thing or the other. Uh, will the government listen? June, that this is projected. This is May. So if it is June, uh, whatever has happened now will be worse in June. And there are no measures exactly. that are, are, we are seeing. 
you, you can't buy anything. And then we were mentioning uh, the things that you need to cook that one cup of rice. And I was saying, you haven't even bought the gas. The gas is supposed to be there, and the price for gas is not here. It's very, very high. And then you're talking mm -hmm. about so many other things. And if you live in Lagos, um, maybe you will even have to buy the water because you don't have water in your house. So everything that you're going to use, you're going to buy. At the end of the day, that cup of rice might cost you more than 3,000 naira to cook one cup of rice. So I don't know where we're going. I, I really don't know. Let's move to the Punch newspaper now. Um, dollar speculation. Federal government rubbishes Binance CEO's bribery allegation. Binance CEO, there's a writer there. Binance CEO allegation di divisionary. No going back on trial. Government officials declare. Remember that um, the Binance uh, chief executive officer yeah, had said yeah. something about bribery and all that. And there is no investigati investigation to see whether uh, he was right or there's some element of truth in it. And they just say, we're not going back. It's rubbish, whatever he's saying. We don't, we don't believe it. Well, honestly speaking, as a nation, we require to stop uh, uh, exposing ourselves to the world as an unserious uh, uh, people. Yes, we've been told that the Binance people were part of the people, part of companies, part of individuals who are manipulating the value of uh, the Naira vis a vis the other foreign currencies. And if you have made such an egregious allegation, you should have been armed with facts and figures to prove your case. The issue in which the finance officials are now being, uh, have been arrested, some of them have been arrested, put in custody, and you're not saying you want to investigate and prosecute. It doesn't speak well at all. In other parts of the world, what you first do is do your investigation, mm -hmm. and when you have your facts and figures, you go and make an arrest, and then you begin to uh, prosecute immediately. So, you shouldn't forget that most of the people involved in this are citizens of other countries. And whatever has happened to them in Nigeria, their nation, their country, their government will be interested. So, we need to handle this matter in a very, very diplomatic, in a very, very diligent manner and be able to show the world that these people are actually culpable of the egregious allegations that have been made um, against them. As regards um, allegations, the certain government officials are asking for pride from them. Well, it may be too early to comment on that. The suspects are the one making these allegations. The government is refusing it. Maybe when the trial really begins, the sultan might be able to show the court or to put before the court. Hello? Yeah, I, I'm uh -huh. still here. The government, I mean, the suspect may be able to uh, put before the court sufficient evidence to show that certain government officials have asked for price for them to let them go. But we must also be careful that when we are talking about government, government operates at different layers. There could be security agencies, there could be prison officials who will be holding the people. There will be investigations in the police, in the EFCC, there are the people in the finance ministry, in all manners of places. Which one of these layers of authorities is the one asking for a classification from the I mean, from the from the suspect in this matter? Is it the CDN uh, officials or what happened? So, in this respect, uh, we need to be careful until we see concrete evidence from the people making the allegations. We may have to keep our fingers crossed as regards that. Okay. Um, even when this is happening to Binance, federal government woos global investors for 17 oil blocks. 
Uh, that's a headline that is there. And then um, let me just take this as well. Abduction. Anger as FIJ reporter, reporter spends seventh day in police cell. Um, there's a connection. We're, we're just talking about uh, the fact that you need to investigate everything. And when you arrest that person, you take him to court immediately. Uh, but exactly. this person has stayed up to seven it's days in police up. cell. No charge in any court, nothing against him except that he wrote an article against the former deputy governor of Lagos State. By law, uh, what, what, what does this look like? Yeah, honestly speaking, during uh, civilian aspiration, is when journalism flourishes more. The court, under civilian aspiration, the people in governance always allow the rule of law to be their mantra, to be the guiding principle of social policy. But sadly, and we could see that in the return of this civil rule, and especially in the last uh, nine or eight years, harassment of journalists, intimidation, threats, and all manners of uh, uh, punishment have been visited on journalists without following the due process of the law. Remember what happened to Albert Jalingo? With that man, somebody came, I think, from Cross River State uh, and what happened to arrest him in Lagos and put him in the boot of the car and drove him all the way to Calabar, where they went to dump him. Uh, in a prison, mm. and he was undergoing trial, he was uh, put through trial uh, for so many years. On the account that he published or wrote some things in some papers against the governor of the state, also the colleague, what has been happening to Omo Yelisho Ure uh, in the last uh, few years, and this also taking place under the uh, civil administration, also happened to a lady who was said to have. Um, they criticized the, the, the product of the company. And then the company, I think, petitioned uh, the police. And then uh, the lady is then prosecuted for criminal defamation. These are some of the things we continue to see. Journalists are being harassed. Lawyers are being harassed. Political opponents are being harassed. And then uh, petitioned with all forms of prosecution. Before investigations are eventually uh, done, look at the men, the uh, men of the Yayabelo uh, trial, the trial that ordinarily to be a straightforward affair, is now getting more complicated and crucial and crucial on a daily basis. So, let's um, employ the security agency, the society is changed. We are in power today, maybe just for about eight years. After eight years, the house of care. You yourself, you need the protection of the law. You will not want rough shots to be living over you. Let us remember, there will always be a tomorrow. And treat Nigerian citizens the way they ought to be treated in accordance with the rule of law. These are not the best of time for journalists, for activists, for human rights campaigners, and also for lawyers. A practice all over the country. Let us remind the government that the constitution is meant to be obeyed and not to be put in abeyance. And before I go, also note that the National Security Advisor have uh, given directives to the security agencies to be more stern, to be more proactive, to begin to prosecute any cyber crime that is committed by Nigerian citizens. And who complains about cyber crimes uh, being committed? It's mostly people and mostly politicians and people in government. They are the one who will say somebody has defamed them or somebody has committed a criminal defamation. If somebody has defamed you and you're a government official, what you require to do is to take the person to court, either for libel or for defamation, and not to begin to write petitions to the police or to DSPC to deal with the person summarily. 
Okay. So in the Guardian newspaper, and in fact in all the papers, but let's take it from the Guardian, a small headline down there, <clears throat> in some papers is a big headline, APC OK's Assembly's Plot to Impeach Fubara. The drama in uh, Rivers has reached um, maybe season three or season four <laughs> of the drama. Uh, now the APC is telling the members in the State Assembly to impeach Fubara. And that follows the comments that Fubara made that uh, the legislators are just existing because he allowed them to exist because they are not, by law, supposed to be in the, leg in the chamber at all. So the APC is now asking their members, who, who are in the majority anyway, in the assembly, the state assembly, to impeach the governor, or to remove the governor, not just impeach, remove the governor. Well, we are about to say, that uh, if uh, an armed robbery kidnapper or a murderer kills another murderer, he shouldn't have such be our business. Kubara rose to power on the back of a tiger. And the tiger now wants to throw him off and consume him. So, ordinarily, it shouldn't be our business. What happened to Fubara? Rather, we should be learning great lessons for man now to see political power because we want power for power's sake. We should learn not to depend on God's father because we want to get the power. For the data as it may, it will see because we are a nation governed by rules of law. We are a nation governed by the Constitution. We are a nation that wants to be seen as a civilized people. And to that effect, we must admonish both Fubara and then the rivers and legislators to play by the rules, to play by the Constitution, not to engage in self-help, such as we have continued to see in this case. Remember, in order to step up impeachment, it was alleged that the government went and pulled down the state assembly that was built by Dr. Odili so many years ago. A great edifice, as I'm told, was never was bombed so that the House of Assembly member would not have access to the space to seek uh, and then be able to do whatever impeachment they want to carry out against uh, the government. But that structure has been pulled down, <laughs> and the people have continued to meet and know that. And they are not even saying that they want to impeach uh, the government. What the governor didn't remember was that uh, the assembly are a law to themselves. Okay, they can even decide to meet in the market square. So long as uh, they have their maze, another symbol of authority, in whatever places they want to make. Furthermore, if I was the governor, and like he has been doing, he should approach the court to stop whatever impeachment the people might want to carry out uh, against them. I will also want to appeal to the security agencies, the police, the DSS, and what have you, to be neutral in the war that is being fought between Fubara and his godfather, uh, Senator Wike, uh, who is the minister of uh, the Federal Capital Territory today. It is their war, and the security agencies to be neutral, not supporting one party against the other. If they are neutral, whoever is able to vanquish the other, so be it. The Nigerian political uh, environment will be better informed, will be better educated, will be better sanitized at the end of the day. Whoever may win the current war that is going on in River State. Well, uh, like the good book said, and I think I've quoted it before uh, this morning, uh, shall we continue to sin that grace may abound 
uh, should we continue to leave illegal things to happen in our country just because of one thing or the other? Somebody will say agreement is not agreement, and they should do what he said he was going to do. But by law, this is a governor, and by law, these people, I don't know what the position of the law is uh, regarding people who just jump from a party to the other because well, of personal gains and all brother, that. My brother, I agree the, to an extent that an agreement is an agreement. When uh, an adult who has his uh, full faculty with him, who is able to think rationally, append the signature to an agreement, a written agreement for that matter, mm -hmm. you cannot go back on that agreement if you really lay time for it. Even if, even if it's, it's against the law, as we wrap up, but even if it's against the law. <laughs> when you are appending your signature to it, so those are not tenable excuses. That's the mere afterthought. If you knew okay. it was unconstitutional, then you don't sign it. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, we we wish uh, River State luck. Uh, we wish Fubara luck. We wish the Assembly luck. We just want uh, peace and we want our country to move forward. But my call is that everybody should try to be doing things according to the book, according to the law. We wouldn't have been where we are right now if we did everything according to law. But unfortunately, this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Mr. Kolawole, thank you so much for coming and sharing your thoughts thank with us. Thanks for having me, my brother. Thank you. Do I yeah. hmm. We've been talking to Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner in Lagos State, and we were trying to x-ray some of the headlines on, our, on some of our national dailies. We'll take a, a breather, and uh, when we return, we'll be talking to our guest on the first Hot Topic. Stay with us. <laughs>